This video is sponsored by Keeps. Bobby, what do you have to say to your fans? Bobby, anything? December the 18th, 2014, Bobby Schmurda is arrested at Quad Studios in Manhattan and taken to Rikers Island to await his trial. And he'd be waiting there for quite some time. And in case you didn't know, Rikers Island is not a place that you want to be for any amount of time. You see, Rikers Island is an actual island in the East River in between Queens and the Bronx, which is only accessible via a 4,000 foot bridge. In fact, Rikers is actually the world's largest penal colony and home to 10 different jails, which mainly hold local offenders who are awaiting trial or serving a sentence of less than a year for crimes committed in New York. So Bobby Schmurder crosses that bridge and waits for his trial on Rikers Island. In fact, Bobby's doing so alongside around 10 to 12,000 other inmates serving time there in the same harsh conditions. But at the very least, Bobby is joining rap royalty having served some time on Rikers Island prison. This is the same prison where Lil Wayne served his one year sentence in 2010 after he got caught with guns on his tour bus. And it's where DMX spent 40 days after violating his probation in 2000. But don't get it twisted, just because Bobby Schmurda is that hot Nigel doesn't mean he's getting off easy in jail, because Rikers Island is notoriously violent and dangerous. I mean, all you gotta do is search the phrase Rikers fight on YouTube, and you'll find enough gnarly prison videos for 1090 Jake to make a whole year's worth of content. In fact, things get so nasty on Rikers Island, it is actually known as Torture Island. And that's not just because of the scary individuals lurking in the cells there, but also because of the subhumane conditions that its residents are forced to endure. The cells on Rikers Island are notorious notoriously cold in the winter and boiling hot in the summer, with there being numerous cases in the past of individuals being literally cooked alive and dying in hot cells during the summer months. Now that's not the kind of hot boy Bobby Schmurder was talking about, but if it's not the heat destroying your insides on Rikers Island, then it's the shanks and shivs, which are often made, carried, swung and poked by its more hardened residents. So with that in mind, it's absolutely no surprise that stabbings and slashings have never been more common at Rikers Island. In fact, the sheer amount of violence that goes on on the island has led to numerous calls for shutting the whole shit show down, but even as the jail's population falls and calls to shut the whole thing rise, life goes on at Rikers and there's not a day that you can't be on your toes. Naturally, another big part of prison politics is the gang culture, and generally inmates at Rikers are forced to pick a side on arrival. Now, if you've watched any of my previous videos about gangs in New York, or perhaps some of my videos about how 6 9 managed to get his way into the blood gang in New York, then you'll know that Rikers Island is the place where a lot of New York gang sets, like the New York Bloods, were first formed, with these gangs originally forming as a result of a need by African-American inmates to band together and fight against the other race-based gangs like the white or Hispanic gangs that were running things at the time on Rikers. And you can see why there was that need for protection even to this day. Because as recently as June 2020, terrifying Hispanic prison gang the Trinitarios had a whopping 26 members indicted for stabbings and slashings on Rikers Island prison. Combine that with this December 2020 incident where a blood member was said to have knocked out a guard's teeth. You don't need much more proof than that to know that these are some tough motherfuckers, do you? So with that in mind, let's not forget that Bobby Schmurder himself is gang affiliated. His crew GS9, of course, being Blue Rag Rockin' Crips. It makes sense that when Bobby went off to jail, his family were worried for his safety. In fact, not too long after his arrival on Rikers, many fans began to circulate that Bobby Schmurder had been stabbed and killed in prison. But fortunately, those rumors were indeed complete cap. However, that's not to say that when Bobby arrived on Torture Island, he had it easy. Oh no, because Bobby said that upon arrival, both him and Rowdy Rebel were held in intake cells for two days where they had to sleep on the floor. At first, me and Rowdy, we had stuck it up. They, we had we an intake before they like they take you up. They had to sleep it in there for like two days. Now, this is apparently the kind of inhumane treatment that one can expect to receive on Rikers Island Prison ever since people were doing bids there back in the 90s. Inmates enter Rikers through this receiving room, but Rikers is so overcrowded, just finding a bed for an inmate can be a problem. I did, there's no room. There's actually no room. So where do they sleep? You're looking at them, Mike. You mean sitting on the benches? On the floor? There it is. It used to be worse. Straight ahead. But once Bobby finally gets to a cell with an actual bed on Rikers, the problems are only just beginning. Because he spends close to a year there on Rikers, just awaiting his trial. Going back and forth from court with endless conferences with lawyers, phone calls and visits, just trying to make some progress with his legal case. He's held on what's considered an absurdly high $2 million bail request, which Bobby can't get together, his label Epic Records don't want to put it up, and 
the goddamn Martin Shkreli can't even get the peas together. Fortunately, whilst he wasn't able to make bail, at least while Bobby was stuck on Rikers, he was getting plenty of phone privileges. Using this time to call the likes of Ebro on Hot 97, giving the public the first update on how Bobby's been doing since he went to Rikers, but ultimately the phone call got cut off when Bobby started getting gassed and suggesting that the NYPD were trying to frame him. Shmurda. Yo. Uh, uh. There uh, he uh, is. Uh, 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 Bobby. Uh, these four or five cops that, 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 that night they had, had just grabbed me up, they told me that, yo, I don't want my kids listening to your music, this and that. It's, it's Hello? Elsewhere in this phone call, we were able to glean some key details. He revealed on the call that he'd been held in protective custody. Yeah, they got me in. They got me in PC, man. They got me in protective custody. He went on to suggest why this might have happened. As initially, it seemed like Bobby and Rowdy were both in general population until they got into an altercation, which Bobby says left Rowdy Rebel getting sent to solitary confinement. So have you and Rowdy been together this whole time? Yeah, yeah, but they just they just took him. They just took him to the box, man. You know, how, you know, me and him got had a little altercation with somebody. You know how that go. Now, this brawl apparently took place in April 2015, where four Crips, including Bobby and Rowdy, had apparently taken on two blood gang members who they'd got into an argument with. Punches were thrown on both sides before guards broke it up with pepper spray. Now, Bobby would actually call back into Ebro later that year, revealing that he too got sent to the box for fighting alongside Rowdy. I heard a whole bunch of rumors that stuff happened to me. Ain't nobody laying a finger on me yet. We, yeah, we, got in a, we, we went to the box over a little altercation. They put Rowdy in like this misbehavior. Now, this isn't a good look for Bobby because solitary confinement on Rikers is no joke. In fact, the brutal conditions in this punishment wing were well documented in this harrowing ABC News documentary. Of solitary confinement across Rikers while we're there. 165 people locked up to 23 hours a day in concrete cells. This is the punishment for inmates who attack officers or each other. Fighting, slashing with hidden weapons, is concrete walls, a toilet, a sink, no TV cut off from most human interaction. It's not even possible to see through the opening on this door. Let's not forget, at this point in time, Bobby Schmurda hasn't even been convicted of a crime yet. So when he's not in solitary, he's on the phone speaking with slash firing his lawyer. You see, while Bobby was stuck in Rikers Island jail going in and out of solitary confinement, he managed to cycle through three goddamn lawyers. First off, we have Howard Greenberg, AKA Greenberg Slim. He takes on the initial strategy of calling the entire 69 count indictment against Bobby and the GS9 a worthless piece of paper? I mean, I know you want Bobby to win the case, but that doesn't sound like something a professional lawyer would say. Greenberg cited lack of evidence, saying simply, Bobby Smurder is rich. Why would he run around doing all of this gang stuff? Well, it turns out this was a stupid strategy because it kind of did seem like Bobby Smurder had indeed become a rich celebrity, yet continued to be involved in a violent street gang. So it didn't take long for Greenberg and his clearly badly thought out strategy to be thrown to the curb by Epic Records. So Greenberg was replaced by Bobby Smurder's second lawyer, Kenneth Montgomery. Montgomery by name, Montgomery by nature. You see, he brought more of a kind of civil rights background to the case. Montgomery was a former New York City gang prosecutor, brought an exciting new strategy to the table, suggesting that it was wrong of the state to try and compare the GS9 to a traditional mafia organization, because really they were just a bunch of street kids growing up in oppressed neighborhoods, sticking together and doing what they had to to survive. Who I guess, you know, maybe used a bit of crime and violence to improve their circumstances. Which, come to think of it, is exactly the same as the traditional mafia did actually back in the day when they came to America. Anywho, from this point forward, Bob Bobby's case begun to be more publicly positioned with a much more favorable narrative as part of a wider media campaign attempting to highlight the injustice aspect of the Bobby Schmurder indictment story. However, once again, it would only be a matter of time before Montgomery would get an opportunity to take a closer look at the damning evidence that the state apparently had on Bobby, which led him to suggest to Bobby's family directly that probably the best thing they could do in this scenario would be just take a guilty plea with the lowest number of years possible. And while Bobby Schmurder sat in jail, pissed off at the non- conditions that he was still enduring at this point was not having it. He wasn't trying to get low time, he was trying to get no time and the fuck out of Rikers. So next phone call he gets, he fires Montgomery too. The third and final lawyer that Bobby Schmurder had whilst he was sat in jail was Alex Spiro. Lawyer to the stars, in-house lawyer at Jay-Z's Rock Nation legal team, Team Rock. Spiro's fought for justice with the likes of Meek Mill. He's actually the man currently trying to put Tory Lanez in a box on behalf of Megan Thee Stallion. And he's actually the same guy who bizarrely managed to finesse Elon Musk's way out of that one 
$190 million defamation suit after he called that cave diver a pedo. Look, if anybody can get Bobby off of Rikers Island, it's Alex Spiro. And as soon as he's hired, he shows a lot of promise. Initially, adopting a smart strategy of trying to discredit the NYPD by calling them a bunch of pedos. Sorry, I mean by saying that they framed Bobby Schmurder. Sorry, it was mixed up the Elon Musk case files there. Spiro actually went as far as to file a strategic lawsuit against the NYPD, claiming false arrest against Bobby for a June 2014 incident where he was caught with a gun in an apartment under suspicious circumstances. So for a moment, things were looking promising between Bobby Schmurder and Alex Spiro. But in the end, just like the lawyers that had come before him, once Spiro took a good look at the evidence against Bobby, he knew that he would be royally fucked if he went to trial. And at this point, maybe the reality was starting to set in for Bobby. He'd been stuck in the hellhole of Rikers Island for around a year at this point, and he'd seen his friends who were named in the same indictment catching enormous 100 year plus sentences. So in the end, Bobby had to take the pragmatic approach and accept a plea deal at the suggestion of Alex Spiro. And Spiro was actually the man who guided Bobby Schmurder into the global plea deal where he was able to secure a seven year sentence for himself with his co-defendant and day one homie Rowdy Rebel also getting seven years reduced down from 12. In fact, that Bobby and Rowdy seven year plea deal has since gone down in hip hop legend as the ultimate marker of friendship with the suggestion that Bobby Schmurder took seven years rather than five specifically so that his boy could get less time. Though the reality was of course slightly more complex than that. And Bobby even tried to change his mind at the very last minute in the courtroom, pleading directly to the judge in court, saying that he was coerced to accept this deal by his lawyer, telling the court openly that he wants to drop his appeal and fire his lawyer at the very last second. This left a frustrated Alex Spiro sitting right next to Bobby Schmurder shaking his head in court. Now, we know this didn't work, of course, the judge wasn't having it, and Bobby obviously had to take his seven year plea that he'd accepted. But you can't really blame Bobby for wobbling at the last hurdle. Perhaps this really was the reality of the situation setting in for the first time. And so after nearly two years rotting away in a cell, Bobby Schmurder would finally receive his sentence for seven years in prison. He'd have to return from the courtroom to his cell and start serving that full sentence immediately. It would be a long, painful road to freedom for Bobby Schmurder. And with the slightest slip up, seven years could become 10, could become 20, could become his whole life. After the sentence was handed down, Alex Spiro said publicly that his hope was that with time served and no more trouble behind bars, Bobby Schmurder would be home in around three and a half years, 2020. And for the record, Rowdy Rebel's lawyer also said that he hoped that with good behavior, Rowdy might be out in five, 2021. So with both of those sentences handed down, there was only one thing left for Bobby Schmurder to do. Settle into his life in prison and ride that bird until those seven years were up. And now a word from our sponsor. Keeps. Keeps. No cap. No cap. Prevention. Prevention is key and that's a fact. Big facts. Yeah. Keeps. 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 No cap. No cap. Preven Prevention is key and that's a fact. Look. Two out. Two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the age of 35. But keeps is a vibe, make yes. your hairline thrive. Do you it. don't have to go broke to keep that hairline alive. Keeps offers scientifically proven treatments that can combat the symptoms of hair loss on your head region. If, if there's hair left, take action so it lasts, cause it goes fast. Good thing keeps go so hard. Now it can take up to six months or more to see results so it's important to act fast plan ahead like an adult keeps off those generic versions of the only two hair loss products out there that are fda approved you might have tried those before but never for this price i hate nasty hairline so grab some keeps and get nice in treatment for hair loss keeps change the game so prevent the inevitable and save your hair from shame and it's easy every three months they deliver a medication no more standing in the line at the pharmacy board waiting no more awkward doctor visits because keeps is the legitest so if you're ready to stop your hairline from going missing then just scroll down the video hit that link in description come on lads no cap get ready to take that hat off of your head and show your hairline proudly if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss go to keeps.com slash tlr or click the link in description to get 50 percent off your first order Order. That's K E E P S dot com slash T L R. Dear Bobby, sorry to hear about your seven year sentence, man. You really didn't deserve that. Just keep your head up and ride your bird G and you'll be out before you know it. Ready to take over the rap game once again. It's going to be hard for me, only able to get new music from my other favourite rapper from 2016, Meek Mill. But I'm sure by the time you get out, Meek Mill will be the biggest, most respected rapper in the game. Definitely not someone who gets confronted by a rat outside of a nightclub. Oh, and Bobby, 
I know that you only get to listen to cassette tapes in jail, so if you check the package this letter came in, I also threw in a tape by the hottest rapper in hip-hop right now. His name's Designer. He's really going places after that Kanye collab. He's definitely here to stay. Anyway, Bobby, good luck with the rest of your sentence. I know that it's going to be hard, but you've just got to remember that you're not just a hot boy, but you're also a strong boy. Make sure you stay on your best behavior, and you'll be out before you know it. Anyway, Bobby, good luck, and peace out from Traplor Ross. P.S. I hope your hat turns up soon. We've all been looking for it. Ah, ah, ah. Bye. On Bobby Schmurder's first day of serving his seven-year sentence, he had already been in jail for 672 days. Which sounds like a decent chunk, but even based on the calculations by his lawyer when he was sentenced, he was looking at at least another 1,460 days ahead of him. Now, at the very least, whilst Bobby was still on trial awaiting his sentencing, he was fortunately moved to another prison. Out of the hellhole of Rikers Island, and into the heck hole of the Westchester County Correctional Facility. Now, there's way less info out there on this prison than there is on Rikers, which is probably a good thing, as the majority of the media on Rikers is pretty much documenting the horror of the shit that goes down there. However, fortunately, in 2012, a rehab program allowed inmates at the Westchester prison to make short films reflecting on their experiences there, which was helpful in giving us a bit of extra insight into what Bobby's life might have been like there. They showcased a decent amount of recreation facilities, inmates are allowed to shoot some hoops on the basketball court, the cells are pretty simple, probably exactly what you'd expect from a jail, inmates can pass the time playing cards or Monopoly, hell, they've even got a rec room with a TV in it, where apparently Bobby spent a lot of time while serving his sentence catching up on his favourite shows, like 50 Cent's Power, or the hilarious antics of Jesus and Miro. In fact, apparently Bobby was so inspired by movies that he had watched sat in jail that he even started writing two of his own. Apparently one of them is about his experiences growing up in the GS9 gang, his childhood friends, where they came from, who they are, and what Bobby went through to get into this situation, and apparently another about his experience as a celebrity. Now I'm personally hoping that we get a Bobby Schmurder written crip remake of Entourage, but regardless, you know for a fact if they make a movie that Bobby Schmurder wrote, it's finna be fire. Anyway, Bobby Schmurder's mom also spoke a little bit about his time when he was in this jail, saying that she stuffs his commissary because Bobby doesn't like the food in there, that he's trying to eat more meat and he misses his mama's good cooking. In Westchester, Bobby is also allowed a Walkman, headphones and a notepad to write some rhymes. In fact, when Bobby's mom told XXL that he was allowed a Walkman, cassette player and a radio, she revealed that she had been sending him hella Michael Jackson tapes. So you know when Bobby drops more music, he's gonna be moonwalking on these hopes. Naturally, this means that while he's sitting around the slammer, Bobby's writing a whole lot of music, but to keep his spirits high, Bobby is also receiving bag after bag of fan mail. In fact, Bobby later revealed that there wasn't a day that went by in jail that he wasn't receiving at least one letter from a fan. Some people even sent him drawings. In fact, Bobby Schmurder even said himself that it was a letter from a six-year-old girl that came to him whilst he was in the box that made him realize how much of a role model he really had become. Bobby says that it was this letter that taught him that the kids were watching him and looking up to him, so he would need to behave himself if he wanted to get free, stay free, and continue being a role model. Now, due to Bobby's high profile and celebrity status, he is also kept in protective custody at Westchester. Here he has more privilege, meaning that he can get in daily FaceTimes with his mother and brother, as well as making time for regular ass calls with famous rappers like Quavo from the Migos, who apparently called Bobby frequently during his stay in jail. So there's plenty to keep Bobby's mind and body occupied whilst he's riding his bird there. But of course, it ain't all sweet at Westchester. Despite not having the Torture Island reputation of Rikers Island, a lot of fuck shit has gone down at Westchester too. In the past, inmates have mysteriously died, with some suggesting cover-ups by crooked guards. But it wasn't just the guards causing problems for Bobby, and he would continue to get into numerous altercations over the course of his stay in jail, finding himself in solitary confinement frequently, where according to a GQ interview, he would immerse himself in books on law and real estate. So even in Westchester, even in protective custody, Bobby has to keep his wits about him to try and stay out of trouble. Of course, one part of this is having a prison job. In a since deleted article from BET, they took a closer look at Bobby's salary from his prison job, working in the commissary and helping process packages and deliveries to other inmates. And in this article, BET T were pocket watching Bobby Schmurder harder than Teabag from Prison Break, clowning him for making as little as 10 cents an hour. Now, Bobby later clapped back at this clowning from BET in a phone interview with DJ Vlad, where he said that dudes don't work in prison for the money, but they're saving up those cents for more time on the phone or good showers. People got fucking stereotypes. Motherfucker don't work in prison for no money. You work in prison to get it on the phone or get extra sh um, or get showers, proper showers, because if not, your ass be showering four or five, four or five times a week, five times if you lucky. Well, Bobby was clearly putting those cents to good use, using his phone time not just to call his family, but to also phone in freestyles for the likes of Meek Mill and Trap. Yeah, I want to hear something. Let me hear something. I said, I said, I said, 
upset. Ain't that nigga never going nowhere, so they don't never want to see you go nowhere. That's why I keep the coke on the stove and the dope by the pole, but the dope for the pole right here. And these bitch ass people gon' fold like Jesus. Rich ass nigga on his own right here. Niggas gon' lie and they gon' act right. Why they show those beats? Cause the hoes right there, but most of these hoes wanna be my bitch. But you see the way that I treat my bitch. Why you think she always been another nigga on? Uh, why cause the other nigga feed that bitch? And one force move and delete that bitch. If I car so fast, you see that shit. That's why they wanna ride and they wanna get hollered. If they go too much, you keep that bitch. I'm pulled off in the Porsche one time. Since you wanna keep it with the boss one time. Then she try to hit me with the talk one time. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Man, this bitch the hog, man. That's your boy right there. Funny, it's usually Meek Mill phoning in a verse. In fact, Bobby later revealed that he was spending so much time on the phone that he ended up getting his ass fired from the job that he was working just to get phone time. Yeah, they say I was on the phone for months. Thing is though, losing his prison job was really the least of Bobby's worries. Because eventually, Bobby's past would catch up with him once again. In prison, just as it had in the streets. Because way back at the very start of Bobby Schmurder's stay in Rikers Island prison, his girlfriend was caught trying to smuggle a knife in. But it wasn't until years after that incident, when Bobby had been sentenced, in the main case, that an investigation took place revealing exactly what had gone down with the smuggled knife. It turns out that Bobby Murder's girlfriend had brought an actual knife into the prison, wrapped up tight in a white latex balloon, which itself was wrapped up in electrical tape. She'd hidden this disguised knife in her bra and attempted to give it to Bobby during a visit, but she was spotted by a guard pulling it out of her bra. Now, at the time, Bobby Schmurder's girlfriend was facing seven years in prison for two counts of promoting contraband and one of criminal possession of a weapon in the fourth degree. She pled not guilty to these charges all the way back in 2015, and Bobby also got slapped with the same charges at the time, as well as three additional counts for perjury because he allegedly lied to a grand jury about this incident. Initially, Bobby pleaded not guilty on all counts. However, as the years went by, likely helped by the fact that Bobby's main case had been dealt with, slowly the feds began to build a stronger case against Bobby and his girlfriend for the smuggled shank. And in the end, much like his original case in the face of the mountain of evidence against him, Bobby ended up accepting a guilty plea for possession of contraband. And in April 2017, as a result of this case, Bobby Schmurder was sentenced to a fresh bid of four years years in jail for that night. Now fortunately this was to run concurrent to his main sentence, but unfortunately this pretty much dashed any hopes of Bobby Schmurder getting out of jail early. It would turn out that after this incident, seven years would really mean seven years, and he would have to ride that sentence to the bitter end. On August the 4th, 2017, Bobby Schmurder celebrates his 23rd birthday. His third birthday since being in jail. As the months go by, more and more pictures emerge depicting Bobby Schmurder settling into his life in jail. Most notable is this impeccable red polo shirt, which isn't really the type of designer drip I thought that you would be spotting in jail. Hell, even Rowdy Rebels got one too. These guys are moving like the low lives on the wing. When did they put a Ralph Lauren outlet on Rikers? <laughs> Anyway, after the four-year sentence for the smuggled shank is handed down, Bobby Schmurder is transferred out of Westchester to the famous Clinton Correctional Facility. There are about 2,000 inmates inside the main prison there. 90% of them are in for violent crimes. That is a high number, and it's the biggest prison in the state. The median age also matters here, because look at that, 39, and the median minimum sentence 14 years, three quarters of the inmates in a recent survey by an inmates advocacy group said that they have been subjected to racial harassment. Beyond that, they say that fights are common and the suicide rate is actually quite high here, one of the highest in the state, high among a lot of prisons. So Anderson, all of that adds up to a place that is a very difficult place for any inmate to live. Now, even more so than Rikers, the Clinton Correctional Facility has a very special place in hip hop lore. It's the former home of gun toting crack smoking madman from the Wu-Tang Clan ODB. Tupac Shakur was also a resident of Clinton. This is actually where he was famously interviewed in 1995 with the release of his Me Against the World album going number one from jail. And while we're on the topic of jailhouse releases from the Clinton Correctional Facility, how could we forget my boy Sean? Who 
was also famously interviewed in the facility, releasing his number three album, Godfather Buried Alive, from that jail while serving his 10 year sentence he got after shooting up that nightclub with Diddy. In fact, Bobby himself also took advantage of the Clinton Correctional Facility's relaxed attitude towards in-person interviews to appear in person, bizarrely, on an NPR podcast about Bobby's life. A podcast which, in my opinion, was very well put together, but not particularly illuminating. I personally think it was a bit of a shame that the only opportunity for an in-person interview with Bobby Schmelder whilst he was serving his sentence was wasted on an audio-only podcast that ended with a rather unsatisfying climax, where the interviewer suggests that maybe what Bobby went through was worth it for the story, something he clearly doesn't really agree with. Yeah, it gave me a whole story. lot. Gave me a story, 20 hours in the cell. <laughs> I mean, dead friends, a bunch of shit. Now, despite the understandable dose of regret that Bobby must have been feeling riding this late stage of his sentence, in general, Bobby's spirit seemed to be lifted whilst he was at the Clinton Correctional Facility. In pictures that leaked from his time here, he looked like he was spending a lot more time with his family and looking happier and healthier. And clearly, when he wasn't on the phone or in the visiting room chatting to his folks, he was in the gym getting diesel. Because in December 2018, pictures emerged of Bobby in jail looking more ripped than he ever had. And I'll tell you what, it was a good thing that he did get in shape because he looked super happy when GS9 homie left Lefty Loke rolled through with a couple of cute ladies. You see, apparently Bobby had complained to Lefty about the lack of girls in the joint, so Lefty came through immediately with three baddies. How is Bobby getting more girls than I do in prison? Anyway, when he's not partying with his homies and three girls, he's also doing phone interviews to keep his name ringing in the hip hop media. In July 2018, Bobby does an interview on This Is 50 with 6 ix former DJ Punch. You already know what it is, man. I got that boy Bobby Schmurter on the phone. A lot of people always want to say what's going on. Hey, 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 hey. Bobby, what's up, man? During this conversation, Bobby actually gave his opinion on 6 9 who was popping in the streets at this point for his rainbow hair and questionable gang affiliations, with Bobby saying that when he saw 6 9s colourful hair, it was that that made him realise that rap is just entertainment. Well, first of all, I seen all the colours in the hair and all that crazy shit, I started laughing, like, the fuck going on? Yeah. yeah that's what motherfuckers in the streets and, and jail, everybody gets um, um, feeling real loud. Like this shit is entertainment. A motherfucker will express his the way he expresses himself, that's what it is, you know? Well, clearly these words of positivity made it to that skittle-headed entertainer in question, because in October 2019, clearly Bobby had made a phone call to 6 9 personally, dropping off a little jail phone freestyle while he was there, the recording of which eventually made its way to 6 9s hit song Stupid, which managed to hit number 25 on Billboard whilst Bobby Schmurder was still in jail. Naturally, once this song hit the charts, 6 9 got on the phone to call Bobby, giving him congratulations and an opportunity to speak directly to the fans. You number 25 on a billboard, nigga. Nah, you should be me, nigga. We, nigga. We, you know, that like that, you. Anything you want to say to your fans? Um, two years, like 2020. Yeah, I'm you know. Ready for the mixtape. You know what I'm saying? Ready, ready to take, re mix ready mix to take, ready to take the city over. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to take the city now, we want the world, nigga. Want the world, that's a fact. So in jail, Bobby's getting more girls than me, he's making more hits than me, and it sounds like he's got more friends than me. Now, of course, Bobby's behind-the-wall bromance with 6 9 did not last long, and the following year, when he phoned in for an interview with DJ Vlad, he seemed to have come to terms with his former homie 6 9 turning snitch. In fact, Vlad even asked him directly about 6 9 and his snitching ways, to which Bobby said the cops would know better than to even offer a snitch deal. Kashi 6 9 is, is fully cooperating and, and telling on everybody. Are you from the hood? You supposed to know that he's just rappers. Don't expect nothing from them. These motherfuckers was, had everybody locked up. You know what I'm saying? He's entertainers. Let's believe a lot of these rappers, they just rappers. You gotta leave them alone. You know what I'm saying? Even niggas in the streets, leave these rappers alone. But I'm locked up since I was 12 years old. They know I am. They know they, they can't ever come to me and no shit like that. You crazy? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bobby was also asked if he would ever collab with 6 9 again, to which he replied, Hell no. Duh, would you do a song with Takashi after you got out? Hell motherfucking no. When speaking with Vlad, Bobby also offered up some sage wisdom to the next generation of drillers. Essentially saying that sitting in jail is corny and not something to look up to. The point is to break free, you understand? To get out of it. That's why when, when we get out the game and motherfuckers they put down anything and we doing positive shit, man. That's, that's a blessing, you understand? That's so you can get out of it. So you're supposed to learn from that and get out of it from an early age. I'm 24, you know what I'm saying? I've been going to jail since I was 12. The motherfucker locked up since I was 12 on the corner with crack. It should be corny since day one. You understand? We're fucking gonna be confined with it. That's why I tell the young kids, you gotta learn from the older niggas, the older people in general, and learn from them and, 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 and not make the same mistakes. 
be smart. Now, Bobby had clearly been through a lot of psychological growth over his time in jail, and in these late stages of his sentence, he began to seem a lot more happier and wiser. In January 2019, Bobby's mum shares pictures of him looking happy and healthy. And as the days turn to months, the months turn to years, the light at the end of the tunnel begins to emerge in front of Bobby. On the 4th of August 2019, Bobby's mum Leslie visits him in jail for his 25th birthday, saying that it's around 15 months until he gets out. His mum said that she had spent the last five years straight visiting Bobby in jail for his birthday. That's a real one right there. Shout out Bobby's mum. But from here, the months continue to tick past, and for everyone that does, fans get more and more excited about Bobby's pending release. In August 2020, rumours swirled that Bobby was getting out of jail imminently, but it would turn out that that was cap and Bobby would need to stay in jail a little longer. Turning 26 in jail, making that his sixth and final birthday behind bars. And it was actually around this time that Bobby, who was still in touch with Quavo of the Migos in the DMs, who he'd been chatting with throughout his whole stay, begun to share his fantasy of exactly how things would go down the day he got out. Bobby dreamed of stepping out of jail, being greeted by a private jet, blooded out with his gang, a couple bad bitches in rotation, and a celebration like it was his real birthday. On January 2021, Rowdy Rebel is released early, before Bobby Schmurder, giving fans just a little taste of what goodness was to come. And then eventually, after a long, painful, grueling road, Bobby's day finally comes. On Tuesday, the 23rd of February, 2021, Bobby Schmurder is finally released from jail. Picked up from the airport by his homie that had his back in the DMs throughout his entire sentence quaver. As promised, on a private jet, surrounded by bad bitches, and of course, a case full of shmoney. Yeah, my boy's out! He is out! He is free! Free Bobby, baby! Free Bobby, say it till it's backwards, and that shit is backwards, baby! Bobby is home! Bobby Schmurder went through hell over the last seven years. That doesn't make what him and his boys did in the streets okay. But in the eyes of society, Bobby Schmurder has now paid his debt. And he'll be on probation, under the watchful eyes of the law, until 2026. But the most important thing is Bobby Schmurder has done his time, he's given back for what he took from society, and now he's got a chance to do things again the right way. I can't help but think back to that six-year-old girl that wrote to Bobby Schmurder whilst he was in solitary. And I'm sure Bobby Schmurder hasn't forgot that too. If he thought he was a role model then when he was sitting in jail serving his time, then he's ten times the role model now. With thousands of young, impressionable hip hop fans with all their eyes on him, waiting to see what his next move is. Unfortunately, Bobby's in a great position. He's got the fans on his side, he's got the streets on his side, and hopefully soon, he'll have the music on his side. Hopefully, from here on out, Bobby Schmurder is gonna be a great success and one of the best stories in hip hop history. As someone who came into the game on the wrong path, took some losses, did what they had to do to make things right, and then made the most of the opportunity they got when they did. I'm super excited to see what Bobby does with this opportunity, and I hope that going forward, he can stay out of trouble and inspire a whole generation of others to do the same. Hope you enjoyed watching that video. I enjoyed making it, and until next time, Peace out. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to my other channel, Trap More Ross. I'm uploading here less and there more. That's why it's more. Law, more, law, more, law, more. Peace.